thank you for taking the time to tune in and watch this video. Uh, I know there's a lot of crazy stuff going on right now with coronavirus, and I've really just uh, been trying to practice social distancing and keeping my head out of the media and focusing on writing code, challenging myself, and just uh, trying to enjoy myself during these troubling times. And I wanted to share something recently uh, that hopefully you'll find useful. This is related to uh, the DJI SDK. Now, DJI has put out a mobile SDK for both iOS and Android, and this example will be for iOS and specifically for Swift. Now, I've gone ahead and forked the mobile SDK. You can see uh, that it says D Baldwin Mobile SDK iOS, and more specifically in that code, I've uh, been focusing on Swift for the past couple of years, trying to transition away from Objective-C. And let me just give a demonstration of uh, what this app does at a high level. So I've gone ahead and committed this code. I'll put a link to it below. If you guys choose to experiment, I'll talk you through what it does, and then I'll give a demonstration. So I'm going to uh, run the Swift demo in the simulator, and we'll go ahead and let this launch. For simulator purposes, I'm going to go ahead and be able to open that. And here are some of the default uh, views that DJI has provided just to teach you how to get various components and information from your aircraft. Now, I've added this one called Virtual Sticks, and this is what I'm most interested in. Really just being able to uh, create some custom flight paths, uh, being able to send commands to the DJI flight controller, on a frequency of anywhere from 10 to 20 hertz. That's sort of how it's specified. And it's really a different type of navigation than what I've normally worked with with uh, waypoints. This, you're actually sending X, Y, and Z velocities to the flight controller. And it's really very impressive how uh, the flight controller uh, performs as you're sending these velocities uh, to it. My hope is to create a bunch of different flight paths uh, through code and using a little bit of trigonometry uh, to be able to uh, calculate X, Y, and Z values to send. So I'm just going to demonstrate something simple, a roll left and right. I'm going to go ahead and click this. And you can see here that the X axis is being updated, the X velocity going from a minus one to a one. So what that will actually do is cause the aircraft to roll left and right. And, and I'll issue the pitch forward and back function and you can see now we're no longer sending sending x velocities we're sending y from minus one to one and let's just do an up and down we'll see the z-axis now change and i've actually been able to do a horizontal and vertical orbit so in that case the x and the y axes will change and then if i do vertical the X and Z, and we'll actually take a look at that. But here are the different functions that are associated with those buttons. Uh, we're sending this at a frequency of 20 hertz. The DJI flight controller can support anything between 5 and 25. You can actually use this frequency to adjust the distance that your aircraft will travel. And in my case, the demonstration will be in the garage. It's pretty rainy outside, so I want to keep it tight and safe and not run into any issues. And these are the uh, calculations that are being made. And uh, let me just demonstrate a bit of trigonometry uh, just so that this makes a little bit more sense. So for example, the roll left and right, we're sending an X value and we're taking the cosine of these radians. So the radians start at zero, we're adding a small velocity to it and that number is increasing. But when we run cosine on that actual va radian value, that's going to fluctuate between one and minus one. And before I give the actual flight demonstration, let me just uh, show you this interactive example. Now, I had to go back and revisit some of my uh, high school trigonometry lessons, or maybe that was middle school, I don't remember. And this uh, math is fun uh, visualization did a great job. I'll share a link to it below. But first off, let's switch from degrees to radians because that's what we're going to be operating in in our Swift code. And we see that a cosine of zero is actually one. Let's focus on this blue line. This is, uh, pretend we're looking downward on the aircraft. So we have the X axis left and right, uh, the Y axis forward and back. 
So as I go around this circle, we can see that the blue line, which will represent our aircraft rolling left and right, you can see that number oscillate between minus one and one. So as those radians increase, for example, if I go from zero all the way over here to the left, this is 3.142, that's actually pi if you recall, that's pi radians at minus one and then two pi at positive one and then we just keep increasing that's three pi four pi so that means our radian value in our swift code will continue to increase and cause this cosine value to oscillate between minus one and one now if you look at the green which we're taking the sign of the same value which represents the forward and back pitch if i go around you can see that we're oscillating along the y a minus one and a one and if you recall, if you actually want to do these calculations, uh, there are obviously functions built into Swift and JavaScript and other languages, but we have the SOHCAHTOA, right? The cosine would be the adjacent over the hypotenuse. So the adjacent being the blue, hypotenuse, be, hypotenuse being opposite of the right angle, also the radius in this scenario. This is a unit circle. So the values I intentionally have going from minus one and one in the flight demonstration just to keep things compact since we're doing them indoors uh, will also be a little bit more safe so that's just an overview you can also take a look at the code and once again see this oscillation happen but let's go ahead and fire up spark connect the app and do a visual demonstration okay i have spark connected and let me apologize my garage is trash right now but uh, we're going to do this in this tight space, hopefully don't run into any issues. So have the remote powered up. Always recommend just knowing how to activate your flight mode switch. You might need to take control. When you're in virtual stick mode, your inputs mean nothing to the aircraft. So you got to either disable virtual sticks through software or physically take control uh, with your flight mode switch. So the app is fired up, just like we saw in the simulator. Only difference is I'm running this on iPad. I'm gonna go into virtual sticks mode. Now, the first thing I'm going, going to do is just with the remote, let me go ahead and get in the air. Maybe come back a little bit just so you guys can see that. So the first thing I'll do is I'll enable the virtual sticks and then we're going to roll left and right. And so as we demonstrated in the uh, code example, now we're oscillating with a x velocity between minus one meters per second and positive one. So because of the frequency, we're not going uh, too far back and forth, which is good. I don't want to uh, fly too fast or too far away, especially in tight space. So now I'm going to go ahead and we're going to change it to pitch forward and back. So our code is basically updating the flight controller. We're sending it that Y value of pitching forward and back. So let me go ahead now and do a horizontal orbit. You can see that uh, flight controller is super responsive. We're starting to lose altitudes. Let me just toggle out and bring our altitude back up. So that was horizontal orbit. Come back a little bit so we can get those, that obstacle avoidance turned off. I'm going to enable virtual sticks again because toggling my flight mode switch would disable that. So I'll enable it. And now we're gonna do a vertical orbit. getting a little high I'm gonna go ahead and take control and let me just go ahead and bring it on the ground I got a iPad in one hand and the remote in the other it's a little bit challenging so that was just a demonstration of what I ultimately want to do hopefully you guys can see these markers on the garage I've been using Tello uh, with some computer vision to be able to detect those markers and 
center in on them. No, they're known as Aruco markers. So my hope is with this uh, flight control method and these Aruco markers being able to get access to Spark or any DJI aircraft's camera and to be able to position and sort of center in on those markers uh, just because you're when you're indoors you don't have access to GPS sort of a visual positioning system indoors just wanted to share that with you guys hope you found it useful I'll put the links to the github repository and code below feel free to post questions uh, if you have them I hope you guys stay safe and healthy and until next time thanks for watching